Hey guys, so I've been getting about 20 to 30 questions every day about the acrylic clutches that were in my needlepoint cabinet. So today we are in my very, very messy craft room. I just wanted to take some time to show you guys how I finish them. There are a few different techniques that I've used and ultimately I want you to, of course, pick whichever works best for you. But I love that it is an instant finishing, you know, you're not going to have to wait six to eight weeks for it to come back. And also that it's a really affordable finishing option. As I'm sure you guys know, needlepoint is not always the most budget friendly hobby. And so it's really nice to have an option um, that will give you, you know, a nice finished piece that you can have that doesn't require you to spend um, hundreds and hundreds of dollars for finishing. So I can't wait to see everyone's clutches. Uh, the ones I've already seen look so good and I am just so excited to be sharing all this with you. Okay, so for the first method, which is the sewing method, you're going to want your finished needlepoint your fabric, and I'm just using a piece of scrap here, um, some hand needles, your board, a zipper foot, thread color that's similar to your needlepoint or invisible thread, and then just um, a thread bobbin for your sewing machine, which you will also need. And then you're going to take your fabric right side up and your needlepoint upside down. So this is the side this is the side that has the design, and so this is the back of your needle point. So you want the two forward-facing things touching. Okay, so then once you have this kind of lined up, what you're going to do is sew three sides. It doesn't matter which three sides. Typically, I do the long sides and one short side. Um, whichever side you don't sew, you will need to hand sew. So that's why I typically leave the short side. But if you prefer to hand sew on the bottom because no one will see it, that's an option too. Once you have it loaded, you can see your zipper foot is going to allow you to stitch right up next to your stitched piece. Um, if you go over the stitching a little bit, that's totally fine. Honestly, no one's really gonna see it, but um, this will allow you to get really close. So then you just wanna sew, making sure to stay as close to that stitching as possible. And if you end up with anywhere where the stitching is maybe a little too far from your finished piece, that's totally fine. Just go over it with another straight line. So now I've stitched this all the way around and you can see it's created almost like a little pocket. Make sure that all your corners connect because if you if they don't, you'll have a hole and you'll have to flip it inside out again to sew. But this looks good. So now we are just going to trim it. For trimming it, you trim both the fabric and the canvas together. There's no right or wrong amount to trim. I typically leave about half an inch just because I'm a sewer and I'm used to like half an inch seams, but um, the less you leave, the more likely if you made a mistake, it's going to be difficult to go back and fix it. But the more you leave, the more stiff it's going to be and the harder it's going to be to turn inside out. Okay, and the side that you have not stitched, you do want to leave that long just because you're going to need it to be able to tuck under. Um, and then we're going to trim these corners a little bit too, so that way we get nice clean corners when we turn it inside out. So here we are nice and trimmed and ready to turn, um, and then you're just going to turn it inside out. Now I've turned it inside out. As you can see, we have really nice clean lines here, not really seeing any canvas. Um, next thing you're going to do is just kind of fold that canvas that's in the seam under to give it a nice shape. Um, and I know you can see that the canvas is a little wrinkled right now. Don't worry about that. When we put the board in, it'll be smoothed right out. Then for the next step, you just slide your board into this pocket that you've made. So then once your board is in there with your side that's opened, you're just going to fold the excess canvas under and then fold the fabric as well. And you want the fabric once folded just to kind of meet along this nice seam. I folded my fabric under, and then as you can see, if I kind of pinch it, the fabric will perfectly go and cover all of the exposed canvas. So as you're sewing, just make sure to pinch it along the way. Um, if you're not a hand sewer, you can honestly also just use glue. Uh, just be really careful not to get it on your canvas and to make sure that it's nice and closed. But after that, you should be done. You can see there's still a few little wrinkles, 
don't worry about it. When we put it into the case, those will all get worked out because the board is stiff enough to keep it straight. And then the acrylic um, is a flat surface as well. And then the final step, you're just going to add it in your clutch. Now, getting it in can be kind of a tight squeeze, so don't worry about kind of crinkling the board and maybe not keeping it as straight as you go, because ultimately, um, once you get it in there, it'll kind of reshape itself. The board is flexible enough that you can kind of move it around, but then once it is in there, it stays put until you're ready to move it. And then this is kind of what it looks like from the side. You know, there's no canvas exposed. Um, it looks a little wrinkly because I didn't sew my fabric on as tight as I could have, but um, not a worry. Just make sure that when you sew it, you're sewing it on a lot tighter and there's not like wrinkles or anything in the fabric as your sew fabric. Um, some things to note, if you plan to change them out, I would add some sort of tab so you can pull on them. Um, right now, I don't have tabs on any of mine, so I just use my Cricut weeding hook to pull them out. But if you don't have one of those, I would definitely recommend sewing a tab on just to help kind of get it out. But it's nice, it's quick, and it probably took me, um, you know, seven minutes to finish. So the second method doesn't require a sewing machine, but I do think it is a little bit more intensive. Basically, you'll have your finished piece, your board, which is a little worse for wear. I could cut a new one, but it's a demo one, so I'm not too worried. Um, some glue of your choice. I probably would use hot glue just because it's faster drying, but I have no idea where my hot glue gun is. Um, and then just some clips to kind of hold everything together. The first thing you're going to want to do is cut the extra canvas. You probably only need about half an inch all the way around. Now you place your board down and you're going to want to fold your corners in. Keeping in mind that this method, we sewed some extra stitches. So you're going to have one stitch that's actually on the back, one stitch that's on the edge of the board, and then one stitch that's on the front of the board. Okay. So now that the corners are folded in and the glue has begun to dry a little bit, you're going to fold the corners one more time until they meet in the middle. Once you've done that, you'll just clip it down and let it dry. And remember, we're going to have one row showing on the inside. That is totally fine. We want that because it'll ensure when we add fabric that the canvas doesn't peek out. In the meantime, if you wanted to do like a pretty fabric for the back, you'd basically repeat the same process except use um, fabric instead of canvas. And then at the end, we'll put it all together. If you're not using a pretty piece of fabric and you just want to use like a felt or something thicker that's you know one-stop shop that's fine too now is the time i would take to start cutting the felt out to the size that you need so now that the corners have dried a little bit more we're just going to glue down the canvas all the way around while this is drying uh if you have a fabric side that you did that has the board and everything what you would want to do is kind of glue them together I would keep the glue in the middle. Get as close to the edge as you can, but just be cognizant that when you push it together, it will kind of ooze out and you don't want it to ooze over your stitched piece. This last row is purposely on the back to prevent gaps when you're looking on the side. One thing I would recommend, um, go ahead and paint your canvas to look like that same background color, just because as you fold it over, you can get a few stitches showing here or there. So this is basically glued on. I'll give it a few more minutes to dry. So now we have our finished um, piece with felt on the back. And one thing I would always recommend is to pop it in top first, and then we're just gonna pop it in. Okay, and here is our finished clutch. Um, as you can see, it looks really good. Those extra rows make all the difference because we don't see any unfinished canvas. This is what it looks like from the inside and then again you know these little crosses here why it's so important to make sure that you paint your backgrounds because if any of the canvas decides to pop as you are doing turn rows um you know you don't want them to show like that but this is a tutorial so not too worried about that um if you are worried about keeping your needle point safe you can always put something else behind it if you do that just make sure to put in some air holes or that you're not sealing it airtight because 
as you guys know, anytime needlepoint is in an airtight container, it can mold and mildew over time. And I know that you guys work really hard on your pieces and I would hate to see that happen. Okay, so just a final couple things. I know quite a few people asked me like, what do you do if you don't want people looking into your bag? Which I totally get. I hate people knowing my business as well. So there are a few different options. You can of course paint the clutch on the inside with a color that matches your needle point. You can get some vinyl stickers that you place on the inside um, as well. Or I know someone had mentioned that they were probably going to sew like a big pocket and then glue it in there just so they could hide their belongings and maybe not announce to everyone what's in their bag. So there are a lot of different options. I hope you guys find one that works for you. I've had such a good time putting this tutorial together and I can't wait to see, you know, what you guys come up with. Make sure to tag me in your finished pieces because I love to see them. And then um, let me know if you have ideas for any other helpful tutorials in the future. Bye.